Lagos. The commercial hub of Nigeria, home to Africa's largest economy and one of the most populous cities in the world. With over 190 million citizens, a significant challenge to this developing nation has been meeting the healthcare demands of its vast population. Over the past two decades, Fitson Healthcare PLC have established themselves as one of the leading players in the West African pharmaceutical industry. Basically, the global vision remains the same, uh, but for every year, of course, depending on circumstances and um, you know the economic environment, you tweak, you know, uh, the strategy that basically um, you know implements the global vision um, to suit the exigencies of the moment. So the vision remains the same. It is to be the um, you know number one pharmaceutical industry in Nigeria. Um, that provides value for its uh, shareholders. It all began early 1995, where Fitson started out as a local distributor of pharmaceutical products. By the summer of 2002, the company had set up their first local manufacturing facility, followed by a second facility in 2007. Today, Fitson boasts of over 12 acres of WHO certifiable manufacturing plants completely self-sustainable and energy sufficient. A facility of this magnitude brings so much to consider in the way of day-to-day -day operations. One of the key considerations is maintaining a high standard of quality control, thus ensuring the drugs give the patients who use them the best chance of recovery. Having said that, we must first consider what the end goal was when the idea of building this factory was birthed. Well, a couple of uh, considerations when the idea to set up this uh, kind of facility uh, came to our minds. Uh, we looked at the terrain, that is the form of manufacturing space, and we found out that uh, what obtained at that time wasn't something one can really be proud of as uh, the best the Nigerian pharmaceutical manufacturing industry could offer. And don't forget that when the company was battered, the uh, dream of the promoter of the business was not just to start as a trading concern, but to manufacture. And you know the man we are talking about, anything he wants to go into, he likes to be the best in it. Therefore, when we looked at the terrain then, we couldn't really find any company that could proudly represent Nigeria in terms of uh, practices, in terms of structures, in terms of uh, even offerings, product offerings to the market. Therefore, we set out to put up a facility that would, one, be comparable to the best in the world, two, the one that can give our own people good quality medicines, just like any other people, especially in Europe and America, were able to get. Three, to also upgrade the pharma industry for people to see us and be something that they look up to, something to emulate. Again, to also be uh, at the vanguard of expanding the uh, pharma space in terms of quality of structures, quality of services, quality of men, and quality of the products we are offering to the Nigerian market. At the helm of Fitson's performance and growth are dynamic and visionary leaders who steer the direction of the company's corporate sale. These leaders drive the ethos and culture of excellence in the organization and ultimately develop a platform that future leaders can build on. Of course, um, the, 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 the board is primarily responsible for where we have reached today because they superintend over the, the strategy. You know, they have oversight over management, right? And they are also the governors over um, you know, the strategy of how we do business direction, um, you know, fine-tuning the vision, fine-tuning the mission, 
and what have you. So they are responsible for all of the great achievements that we have today, whether it is the four factories that we have had in the past to the one single item um, that we call the biotech, which has subsumed the other three, four factories into one. Um, you know, whether it is um, expanding into, <clears throat> you know, the several business areas that we have gone into, into infusion, um, expansion um, nationwide. Th these are all thoughts um, from board members, you know, uh, and they have greatly enriched, you know, where we have reached. And, and, uh, but more importantly, it is that they have played the role of ensuring um, that they are the custodian of value for the investing public. We have seen companies when we listed, that we are listed, that have all shut down, right? And are no longer in, in existence. And so a lot of kudos you know, should go to um, the, the board that has ensured that we remain level-headed, um, we stayed true to the creed um, that we signed on to and we are still standing and we are not just standing and surviving but we're doing well. At the heart of the new facility is its utility room, the powerhouse of the Fitzing factory. In a country lacking steady electrical supply, a major challenge for a facility of this size is power in an attempt to reduce the negative effects of emissions on the environment in accordance with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals on Environment, Fitzen utilizes natural gas, which as a result, reduces the factory's emissions by as much as 50%. The compressed natural gas plant, or CNG plant, powers the boilers, compressed air units, and the chillers, whilst allowing the factory to reduce their diesel output by as much as 50%. But gas alone cannot power a factory of this size. As a result, the factory utilizes twin 2000 kVA diesel generators to meet the rest of their power demands. These generators power two VAC systems, as well as the various equipment and machinery within the factory. Having addressed the matter of power, the process of manufacturing begins with raw materials. The production process begins in the raw materials warehouse, where the building blocks for some of these life-saving solutions are kept. A key element in the manufacturing process is the use of purified water. Unlike many factories in Nigeria, Fitzen Healthcare PLC can purify their water on-site with their water treatment plant. The main use for the purified water are for products such as eye drops, drips, and water for injection. Core manufacturing process start from having good water. You must be able we, we have our water processes in such a way that the water is coordinated online, that is the process of disinfection from the borehole, then it goes through what we call um, water treatment processes that start from softening the water. Then after softening the water, you pass the water through what we call reverse osmosis system. The reverse osmosis system removes every unwanted material from the water through what we call fine membrane. And this water, again, is passed through what we call the process of deionization. Deionization is a process that removes all unwanted ions and particles and everything that we do not need in the water. Purified water now fits what we call the multi-column distillation plant. This is the plant that generates the water for injection. 
The water for injection is what we use in the manufacturing of the infusions and the eye drops. This, water for this purified water and also water for injection must be kept in constant loop circulation. When we are talking of loop circulation, they must be in motion in such a way that you don't encourage stagnation. Our aim is to maintain sterility of the product up to the end user, who is the patient in the hospital. You can imagine a situation whereby an infusion product is given to a patient in the hospital and that patient, that will not be of any benefit to that patient and it could even be detrimental to the health of such a patient. So that is the reason why all these stringent processes are put in place in order to maintain that level of the required sterility and even therapeutic efficacy of the products. All manufacturing plants must adhere to varying degrees of quality control. But when one considers the delicate nature of the products manufactured within a pharmaceutical facility and its potential impact on human life, the highest degree of quality control is required and must not be compromised. The Fitson team have maintained a high standard of quality control by putting in place stringent quality control processes. In quality and regulatory affairs, we support the Fitson vision with best practices in quality management to ensure compliance across all processes from the product development till the point where the consumer receives such products for use. Each process, we ensure that the quality of such a product is maintained. We have a policy that guides us, which is a quality policy, and that policy shows our commitment as a company to offering our customers the highest quality healthcare products and services. We engage highly dedicated people or will carry out processes that conform to global best practice in a most cordial environment. Even after such stringent quality control processes, the finished products are then quarantined for a further 14 days and undergo several sterility tests before the products are qualified ready for market. We have adopted the system that works for us and that's the quality management system. The system incorporates current good manufacturing practice as well as using WHO standard as a guide to the way we operate our processes. Include one, the premises and the facility. Here we look at the hygiene, we look at the health and safety of our staff, we look at good housekeeping. We ensure that the temperatures and the humidity of all our environments are monitored as well as the microbial load to prevent contamination of such products. Then we also look at our equipment. Every equipment that resides in this facility is qualified. Qualification ensures that the specification and operations of the equipment is for its intended use. We also look at our processes, which is key to ensure consistency in the delivery of products that meets our consumer in the market. We ensure that all processes are validated and the validation of all processes ensures this consistency. We also look at the personnel. One thing about current good manufacturing practice is the fact that it evolves and as such the capacity of our staff also needs to evolve. And what we do, we, we engage in constant training, building in the capacity of our staff, and we ensure that this is carried out as per requirement. We look at the areas of our stability and ensuring that the shelf life of products are determined. There must be a stability studies carried out on each product that is found in the market. Every raw material that comes into the system must undergo analysis. Even before then, we ensure that the suppliers of such materials are qualified to make sure they are, well, they are complying with GMP requirements before we receive such materials into our facility. Even with that, we carry out analysis to determine whether they are the correct raw materials and as well that they meet with the specification intended for them. We also look at our finished products. Every product that is manufactured, just like it goes through the stringent controls in manufacturing, whereby quality has an overview, 
We also ensure that we carry out the needed analysis for such products to ensure that whatever comes out meets the standard, meets the requirement, is safe, and it has its efficacy due to what it's intended for. With all the stringent processes in place, such as the production capacity of the factory, whereby without slacking on quality, they are able to meet the healthcare demands of the most populous nation in Africa. We have two manufacturing lines. We have what we call large volume parenteras, and we have small volume parenteras. Small volume parenteras are the eye drops and the water for injections. The large volume parenteras are the 100ml and 500ml products. Currently now, we dwell majorly on six large volume parenteras and about eight of the small volume parenteras, including water for injection. The liquid line, as of today, we can do about uh, 185 million bottles of 100 ml capacity per annum. That is how big the stock capacity of the liquid lines uh, is. On the tableting line, we can do 2.8 billion tablets per annum. On the cream lines, we can do about uh, 65 million tubes per annum. The infusion line, we have 60 million by 500 mil per annum. Uh, if you look at these four lines or five lines, let me give you the interpretation of what the tableting line connotes. If Fitzin alone were to be producing anti-malaria for Nigeria, it simply means that we have enough capacity to produce anti-malaria, especially the ACT, for this population and that will only take us about 2-3 months to produce what the entire nation will consume in one year. Therefore, you can see that we are foresighted and far-sighted when we are building this facility to take care of the now and the future. All of these achievements come with their own limitations and challenges. But as a performance-driven company with a culture of excellence, Fits in Healthcare PLC do well enough to rise above every challenge encountered in the industry. Challenges uh, for us is a stepping stone, um, you know, to doing greater things. Um, as you know, the Nigerian business environment is uh, uh, one of the most dynamic. However, as players in the economy, we cannot um, say that the country has not been fair to us because you see, the, 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 the more the challenges, the greater in the end, right, are the returns, right, if you manage your business well. Across multiple functions, Fitson Healthcare PLC is endowed with a team of young, highly talented and motivated people from diverse educational backgrounds and different disciplines that form a highly resourceful personnel. Realizing that the future of the company is defined by the depth and scope of the minds of these young professionals, the company constantly commits considerable investments in human development and training. The next generation of managers in Fitzin are today being trained. You know, one of them is the one that organized, you know, this uh, this entire conversation that this, this interview that we're having. Um, the next generation is taking over in, in finance, finance and accounts. Um, the next generation is taking over the supply chain. The next generation is taking over the HR department, right? These are all very young uh, people in their 30s. I am I'm almost 62 now. And um, these are critical units that we are you know, putting in the hands of young people, right, that people like me and other executive, non-executive board members and executive board members will mentor such that when we retire, you know, these guys will not only have uh, acclimatized um, culturally, right, but they become an epitome of what FITSIN stands for, the culture and the traditions of FITSIN. Even sales and marketing, right, uh, and the operations, which is the factory, have also been infused 
ways um, young people in whom we are investing in their training. The main driver was ensuring that we had a business that would have leave the founding fathers, right, that will um, be a big player in the pharmaceutical manufacturing space and that would in time um, discover molecules and patents, um, you know, like every big uh, multinationals have done over the years. There are multinationals that have existed for 200 years, right? And I see a fits in existing for much longer than that, you know, um, playing beyond the branded generic space that we are in now. As a leading pharmaceutical manufacturing company, Fitson strives to add value to the lives of Nigerians through quality and affordable healthcare solutions. The company is continuously raising standards of the pharmaceutical market in West Africa through executing well-developed strategies. With these strategic directions, the company is consolidating its growth and on the verge of inscribing its footprint on the global pedestal.